this map I've decided to name Roebuck Cove. And as you can clearly see, it's a pirate ship that sits in the middle of this cove. I tried to go for a grimy and green, overcast kind of feeling, like this pirate ship's been sitting here for a while. And it's not even necessarily a pirate ship. It doesn't have any flags or even sails for that matter. Uh, it's just this large ship that's docked in this cove. And I've made maps like this in previous Halos, but the visual fidelity I was able to achieve here uh, was untouchable in previous Halos. This idea first came to be in Halo Reach when I was forging in Forge World. Back then I had a large ship with a smaller ship next to it and had all the infected board the larger ship from one side. And as you can imagine that gets pretty repetitive if the infected are only coming at you from one side. It's also very difficult for the infected to surprise the humans because they're consistently only coming from one side of the map. So when I remade it in Halo 2 Anniversary, I decided to enclose the ship inside of this archipelago, so that way the infected could board the ship from multiple locations, giving them an element of surprise, and that seemed to work much, much better. Although aesthetically, I was really proud of what I was able to achieve with that back then. Uh, as you can see, I've obviously been able to achieve a lot more uh, with this map. Thankfully, I was able to create the basic geometry of the map before even breaking 700 pieces in the forge budget. So with over 300 pieces left at my disposal, I was able to go absolutely crazy with the aesthetics. I completely maxed out the budget. Again, I didn't have to, uh, and I did it in a way that didn't affect frame rate. I didn't put too much attention into just one location. Not to mention the fact that the map is in this U-shape with all the geometry evenly spaced out allows me to completely utilize that forge budget without worrying about frame rate drops. Some of the aesthetic elements I included are this wheel that turns by itself. Of course, that's achieved with a little bit of scripting, as well as the anchor knob. There is also this cage. It kind of looks like a maybe a, a crab cage or I don't know you could have a cage on a ship for a number of reasons but I set it to normal physics and welded all the pieces together and this is something that you can never achieve in any other halo and thankfully uh, most of the bugs that are associated with using the mechanics like this in Halo 5 have all but been resolved. You'll still notice a, a few bugs here and there, but it's mostly unnoticeable now. So you have this swinging cage that players can jump into um, and potentially hide from the infected. Again, I try to make my map nice and flexible so that you can have players that want to play defensively and last to the end of the round, or you can have these exposed areas where they're going to encounter a lot of infected uh, but probably not going to have a long life expectancy. There's a lot of secret entrances on the map. One at the bow of the ship, where you can go under this little walkway at the front. One that's at the back, kind of the captain's quarters area. And also there's a drop down in the center of the map where the floor looks seamless, but there's actually a location where if you walk over it, you can easily drop down into the floor below you. And that's a very quick way to get away from infected players that may be on your tail. The inside of the hole was achieved by using some of the new grass pieces. One of the biggest things you'll notice right off the bat is the utilization of the new textures that we've been provided. Uh, there's wood texture, there's a marble texture with a little bit of grime, actually looks like metal, uh, and also the cobblestone looking material. It really gives Forges a whole new level of flexibility when it comes to creating a captivating experience. And that, as we've covered in a previous video that you can find here, is more important in Infection than I think almost any other game mode, because so much of Infection is about the setting, it's about the experience of the game, it's about really feeling like you're the hunter or the hunted, and really selling the aesthetics is hugely important in Infection. Another major landmark of this ship are the two masts, and you'll notice that there aren't any sails on them. Uh, having those sails that reach off over the side of the boat uh, was problematic when it came to player containment, and I'll go over that shortly. But as you can see, there are these knobs or little branches that come off the side that can be used to hold you know, equipment or what have you. But those can also be used by the Spartans to scale up to the top. And from up there, players can get a pretty good view of the rest of the map. There's a 
moderate level of fog going on here, kind of a gray green fog that limits the visibility for people that are way up on top significantly. Uh, you can't actually see most of the shoreline from the top of the ship, and that's intentional. I tried to balance uh, visibility with the aesthetics, with making sure that that spot at the top wasn't too overpowered. You'll notice the diameter of that platform is a little bit large, and maybe that looks a little bit off. Originally they were slightly smaller, and I thought that might be better because then you could only have a limited number of people at the top, but I found that making the diameter of those discs of those little platforms wider actually allowed the infected to scale up the mast if as long as they stayed close to the mast they were able to scale all the way up to the top without being seen by the players up at the top now the infected start off on the shoreline and they reach the ship by a series of gravity lifts now gravity lifts didn't really fit with the theme i was going for so what i did was make a series of docks with these wooden pads at the end uh, that if you run over, they will launch you to various locations on the ship. And if you play this map a little bit consistently, you'll see that each pad has a designated location that it launches to. And that ups the map's replayability because you can learn where these launch you. And if you spawn close to one and you know where the humans are hiding on the ship, it might actually benefit you to walk over to another jump pad because you know that that will launch you to a favorable location on the ship where you can have a positional advantage over the humans. It allows the game and the map itself to be fun for players experiencing it for the first time and players that have played it multiple times because they can learn these routes, learn where these secret passages and drop downs and jump ups are. A major obstacle I had to overcome was allowing the infected players to launch onto the ship um, and also keep the human players from jumping off the top of the ship and landing on the shoreline. As I covered in that infected video I mentioned earlier, it's imperative that if you have a spawning setup like this, where the infected are spawned outside of the actual playable area, and they have to navigate into the area where they're going to encounter the humans, you have to make it so that the humans cannot in any way reach that exterior area because it is not designed to support a balanced game of infection. You can't have humans on a wide open beach uh, camping there or, or on top of a rooftop somewhere because it's not meant for human players to be there. They will have way too much of an advantage over the infected. So, what I did to combat that was set up a series of invisible walls that kept players from jumping and then ground pounding off the top, but they're high enough up that the infected players are able to still use the jump pads to get onto the ship. And over a series of playtests, so far it seemed to work out pretty well. There's also these lanterns uh, on the boat, and I have Mr. Pokefile to thank for that. Again, it was great to have so much budget left over after the physical map and all the required features were set in place. This has been the most fun I've had forging in a very long time. And just knowing that Forge is getting better and better and soon we're going to have it on the PC, it's a very exciting time to be using this tool. So if you like what you see here, go ahead and give it a download. Again, it's only seen a handful of playtests so far, but thankfully even the very first playtest went pretty well with the infected. Uh, winning some rounds and the humans winning others and again it can vary widely depending on the strategies that the two teams use so working together as a team is imperative here uh, both for the infected and for the humans but it was a great project I had a lot of fun give it a download if you enjoyed it if you like this video uh, give it a like I appreciate when you guys do that it really helps me out uh, also share this video if you enjoyed it and if you think someone else might enjoy the content here if you have any suggestions for future videos or anything I should implement on this map go ahead and leave it in the comment section below and if you're not subscribed hit that little red subscribe button right there and you'll be alerted the next time I have a video up and if you enjoyed this one you'll probably enjoy any of my future content as well thank you for taking a look and I'll catch you guys in the next one Infection. Round one.
minutes left. survivors remain infected. Last Spartan dead. Survivors eradicated. Round two. Two minutes left. Thirty seconds. New teammate. Ten seconds. New teammate. Survivors win. Well lost. Round three.
Two minutes left. Survivors remain. One minute left. Two survivors remain. Last man standing. Thirty seconds. <laughs> Survivors eradicated. Round lost. Round four. Two minutes left. Survivors remain. Last spark you stand. Survivors remain. In last Spartan stand. Teammate join. Two minutes left. Round one. Round two.
remain infected. Two minutes left. Two survivors remain. His teammate joined. Suicide. Spartan stand. One minute left. The fires eradicate. Survivors eradicated. Round three. Missiles coming. Two minutes left. One minute left. Thirty seconds. Ten seconds. Survive. Survivors win. Round four.
Two minutes left. Survivors remain. Last Spartan standing. Game over. Victory. <laughs>